Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I, as always, am your host, Justin Lesko, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt and former pro MMA fighter. When I was watching UFC 268 this weekend, the commentary team kept referring all night to Kamaru Usman as the pound for pound best fighter on the planet. And the first time I heard them say it, I sort of thought to myself, are we just doing that thing the UFC always does where whoever is fighting in the main event is always referred to as the best pound for pound fighter in the world? Ultimately, I just resigned the fact and settled on the uncomfortable realization that I fully agree with Joe Rogan and Daniel Cormier about something. I actually said on Twitter on Saturday that if you were to build the perfect MMA fighter from scratch, you'd be hard pressed to find a better model than Kamaru Usman. And I, as usual, think that I am right. Shocker. But how good is Kamaru Usman? Is he the best welterweight in the world? Sure. But is he the best pound for pound fighter right now? Is he really the best pound for pound fighter ever? Let's take a look. Obviously, spoiler alert, Kamara Usman defeated Colby Covington in the rematch on Saturday. I don't think the fight was super close. I, I'd say it was close enough that I was worried we were about to see a big time robbery and somehow at least two idiot judges would give Covington the win. Fortunately, they didn't do that and the rightful winner was crowned and Kamar Usman remains the king of the welterweight division. But is he also the king of all MMA right now? Kamar Usman is so good because he is so good everywhere. He is a fantastic wrestler. He's a three-time NCAA Division II All-American and a Division II National Champion, but he also has fantastic wrestling for MMA, meaning that he blends his striking and his wrestling together very seamlessly. It's not always a blast double leg from the outside with no striking setup. He uses his striking to set up his takedowns, and in reverse, he uses his wrestling to set up his striking. You see him at times exiting grappling exchanges right into striking combinations. Working with Trevor Whitman for his last few fights has honed his jab and improved his footwork. And just a side note, a tangent, Trevor Whitman went 3-0 on Saturday night with obviously Usman winning, Justin Gaethje also won, and Rose Namajunas won. I don't think that there's a better coach in the world right now than Trevor Whitman just based on results. Let me know in the comments why you think I'm wrong but I'm not. Usman is now not just a great wrestler who has good striking, he's a great wrestler who now has great striking as well. I said the fight was close-ish, and that's because Covington did have some success when he got reckless and he sort of drug Usman into a slugfest. The risk you run when you get into a slugfest with Usman is that he has one touch knockout power, just ask Jorge Masvidal, Masvidal made it a brawl and Usman sent him to the Shadow Realm. A scary thing about Usman is that even when Colby landed hard shots and it looked like Usman was hurt or in trouble, Usman doesn't deviate from the plan. I am sure that he swang and banged with Colby a little bit more than Trevor Whitman would care for, but Usman doesn't retreat. He, he doesn't die for the legs if he gets hit. He follows the game plan and he keeps landing his shots. The only way that someone is going to take out Usman right now is to drag him into a brawl and catch him before they get caught. We saw it on Saturday night though in the second round. Usman has power even when he's throwing short shots. He was landing his short check hook inside of Colby trying to land a bigger hook. Trevor Whitman has done a lot for Usman's striking. Usman was a good fighter before he made the switch to Trevor's camp, but I think now he's elevated to a great fighter. I think he's the best fighter in the game right now. He's possibly one of the best ever, but we will get there in a second. I don't usually advocate for someone going up for double champ status because I think it really log jams the division that they're currently the champion of. But in this case, I think it's really the only true test and the only thing standing in the way of me saying definitively that Usman is the best fighter ever. Well, maybe not the only thing. Maybe I have some other things. I doubt he's ever making lightweight, but 185 seems very doable for him. And I do think he's got a good path to victory over Izzy. I think he's got a good path to victory over everyone, really. 
If you take what I said in the beginning about building a fighter from scratch and how Usman would be a good model to start with, if you take that and what we're trying to build this time is someone to beat Usman, well, what do you need? You need someone with more power and better striking than Masvidal or Woodley. And speaking of Woodley, it would be great if this hypothetical fighter had better wrestling than Tyron Woodley, who happens to be a two-time NCAA Division I All-American, and Colby Covington, who's now also lost twice to Usman, who's also a Division I All-American. You'd need someone with better jiu-jitsu than Sergio Moraes or Damian Maya or Rafael Dos Anjos or Gilbert Burns, which is a tough ask. And since this is obviously an MMA fight, we need this new fighter to not just be better in one of those areas. It would be great if they were better in all of those areas. I don't know that such a person exists. And if they do exist, I, I don't know if they're going to build themselves up to a title shot against Usman in the same span of time that Usman will still be fighting. In one of the promos for this fight against Covington, Usman said of Covington that it was something to the effect of some fighters just have to live with the fact that they could be the best in the world, except there's one person who will always beat them and who will always be ahead of them. I think Usman can pretty much say that about everyone right now, not just Colby Covington. Here are some guys who are on the men's pound for pound list, and this is in no particular order. This is just who I think of when I think who is the best pound for pound fighter right now. Israel Adesanya, big fan. Francis Ngannou, also a big fan. Obviously Usman we're talking about. Uh, Charles Oliveira, who's the 155 pound champ. Max Holloway, who, big fan, maybe he doesn't deserve to be on the pound for pound list right now, but I'm going to put him there because I really like him and I think he should be there. Fyodor Jan, I think, should also be there. Uh, I guess I will still include John Jones, even though I don't know if slash when he will be fighting again. There are others, obviously, who could be on this list, but you get the gist. Usman is now on a five title defense run, the longest by far of anyone in the pound for pound discussion. In terms of blends of skill, I'd argue Kamaro has the better balance. Like you've got Izzy, who's a fantastic kickboxer and a striker, and he's developed good takedown defense and the ability to get back up from the bottom when he needs to. But I think fantastic wrestler with great stand-up is a better combo than fantastic striker with great wrestling. It affords you the ability to change the location of the fight more easily. And it's grappler versus striker argument. I will always think the grappler has the advantage. So if you're the superior grappler, I think you have the advantage. Yes, John Jones would fit into this model of well-rounded, all-around skill. But again, when is John fighting? Is John fighting? I'm hesitant to say that he's the best pound for pound fighter over Usman when he hasn't fought since February of 2020 and you know, he's a drug cheat and all. Which side note, Kamaru Usman, because you're obviously watching this, please, 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 please never test positive for anything. I know you just got your jacket from USADA for 50 clean tests and that's great because you do not look like you should test clean. I'm happy that you do. I would hate to lay out this whole episode of how great you are. And then you pop for something and it's all for not. So just for the sake of my production effort, please stay clean. So if you look at the pound for pound list and you can go through anyone I didn't mention or I did mention, I think that there isn't a lot of argument for why they're ahead of Usman. Usman is number one pound for pound right now. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong and why. And now, dear viewer, you can stop yelling at me through whatever device you're using to enjoy this fine program of mine because I am finally going to mention one George Rush St. Pierre. Usman versus GSP right now. Usman wins easily because he's in the prime of his career and George is not. That's, that's just what it is. Prime GSP versus Usman right now. I don't know. That could go either way. And if you ask me tomorrow, I might have a different answer from who I say would win today. But how dare I imply that Usman may be the GOAT instead of GSP? Let's have a think about it and let's think why we think GSP is the GOAT, assuming you do as well. GSP and Usman are similar fighters, I'd say. The difference is Usman's career is still going and going strong. What can Usman do to overtake GSP? Well, the first thing, win a title in a second division because George did that against Bisping. 
it's a little surprising to hear, but Usman only needs four more title defenses at welterweight to tie George's nine title defenses. Based on the current roster of welterweights, I, I think this is doable. Usman's already beaten Covington and Masvidal twice. Leon Edwards is in the mix, but I think Usman handles him. Same thing with Vicente Luque. Not to say they're not great fighters. They are, but I don't think they're on Usman's level. GSP won 14 of his 26 wins via finish. That's a 54% finish rate. I'll do the math for you. Usman has won 10 of his 20 wins by finish. That's a 50% finishing rate. Pretty similar, so no need for big changes there. Just keep winning the way you're winning. But there are two things that Usman needs to do that have yet to be decided. Number one, Usman needs more legends on his resume. Damian Maya, to me, is a legend. Others will disagree. But outside of Damian Maya, there isn't anyone on Usman's resume that I'd say, oh, for sure, that dude's headed to the Hall of Fame, no question. GSP beat BJ Penn twice, but I would argue that BJ won that first fight. GSP also beat Matt Hughes twice. He beat Matt Sarah, Jake Shields, Nick Diaz, Carlos Condit. Big name guys. Now, in fairness, there's still time on the clock for a lot of the guys that Usman has beat. Maybe in five years from now, we're talking about Colby Covington as one of the best guys ever, although I doubt it. Maybe Gilbert Burns goes on a tear and we look back at how easily Usman beat him and we're amazed. I can't believe that Usman beat someone as good as Gilbert Burns that easily. Time will tell. The second thing Usman needs to do, and this is another time will tell thing, it involves a very cool stat about GSP. GSP's opponent's total record when they fought was 498 and 101 and 8. And I'll save the math for you. That works out to be about an 82% win percentage of GSP's opponents. Those same opponents, after fighting GSP, the record combined is 203 to 190 to 5. That is a 51% win percentage. Obviously, BJ Penn hanging on way too long brings that second win percentage down a tad, but it still means the same thing. People just weren't the same after they fought George. People got their crack at GSP and whatever he did to them in those fights, it stuck with them and they weren't the same after. Now, some of you will already be typing your comment that the combined record of 50% after fighting GSP means that GSP fought guys at the end of their career. And that would be true if that was the only number I gave you. But I'll say it again, GSP's opponent's combined win percentage when they fought was 82%. He was fighting the best guys in the world when they were the best, and after they fought, they were not the best anymore. If Usman can match that, if he can derail guys' whole careers while also at the same time adding legends to his resume, I, I think he overtakes George as the best to ever do it, especially if he wins another title in another weight class. As of now, he's not quite the GOAT, but I think he's on the right track. Who do you think is the best fighter ever? Is it GSP? Is it Usman? Or are you screaming someone else's name at me through your screen right now? Let me know down in the comments who the greatest fighter ever of all time is. I do hope you enjoyed this episode. There are more episodes over here for you to watch. If you want to watch the bonus Q&A episode that's coming out later this week for members only, please make sure you check out the member area, which I will link to below. Thank you again for watching. I will see you all in the next episode.